Welcome to Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. This title is currently in beta version, therefore only a limited number of modes are playable. The online lobby will become available during the open beta test period. Outside of the open beta test period, you can jump right into local versus battle and versus mode, or start with the basics and tactic mode. This is basically like fighters, like a more choppy version of fighters. You can actually run in this, and use right stick to zoom, but you know, I don't have a right stick because I'm on my fight stick, so you know. Yo, what's going on guys? It is your boy, your main man, your main black man, Tavius, back with another video. We are on the blaze blue cross tag team beta like i said getting into more fighting games this is one that i'm gonna be bringing to the channel i'm on the beta version right now i just wanted to try this game out gonna be doing the tutorial for this video from what i've seen you can only play two characters in this gene and ragnar which i have no idea who they are don't know anything about any of these games that are other from the people that are in here welcome to tactics mode here we will explain basic controls for blaze blue cross tag battle take some time here to learn how to play before you jump in movement in actual battles you can select the characters you like but in this mode you'll use ragna the blood itch gene kisara game rules blaze blue cross tag battle is a 2v2 fighting game when a character's health gauge reaches zero that character is considered defeated the winner of the match is the first player to defeat both of the um the basics player one and player two the character on the left is player one this is all basic stuff you can stock up to five points in the skill gauge and the gauge is consumed when using fancy actions like extra skills and distorted skills however the skill gauge is shared between tag partners if one character uses too much the other character will be left unable to use it plan accordingly cross gauge the oblong gauge near the skill gauge is the cross gauge this is consumed when using cooperative actions with your partner such as active partner skills and cross combos the cross gauge recovers over time so you should be proactive and cooperating with your partner. All right, chill out, Ragna. Next lesson. That's <laughs> simple enough. Didn't even do anything in that one. All right, ground movement. When pressing the D-pad in the direction of the character is facing will make them advance, while pressing blah, 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 the opposite direction will make you retreat, up, jump, down, crouch, basic stuff. I want to know what my assists and stuff are. Crouch, jump. FN2? The freak you mean FN2? Can I just hit next? Yeah, I'm just gonna do it like that. That's, I don't know what the freak FN2 is. <laughs> I'm low key about to look it up. Attack one smart combos. There are three attack buttons to attack your opponent in Blaze. Oh, cross tag team with the freak. Attack A, attack B, and clash. Oops, I didn't see that. Whatever it said. Now try attacking using Raiden. First test out attack A and attack B. We have auto combos in this game? Yeah, that's square auto combo, or... Nice triangle auto combo. Your fundamental attacks will use these two buttons. If you want to know more about Clash, please refer to the attacks to Clash Assault tutorial. Attacks 1, Smart Combo. Smart Combo. When attacks like Standing Attack A and Attack B hit the opponent, you can repeatedly press the same button to continue with more attacks. So basically an auto combo. This is called a Smart Combo. <laughs> it's not smart. Now try using a Smart Combo. It's what they call it, but it's still an auto combo and it's still gonna be trash. It's still what the inexperienced players are going to do. Bink? It looks like uh, Broly's uh, grab and fighters. Oh, so they do have, they have, they have instant air dash in this game. Where you just diagonal and then back. Or diagonal forward. Oh, that, that's nice. I like that. Because that's what they have in fighters. That's, that's, that's good to know. Great. Remember that after an attack A or attack B hits, you probably want to continue into the smart combo. Clash Assault. When you press the clash button in a standing state, it will activate a clash assault. If this attack hits an opponent on the ground, a follow-up attack will be performed. If you have a partner in reserve at this time, you will attack together. Furthermore, you can increase the final attack's power by pressing the button at the right time. Now try using a clash attack. A successful final attack will display marvel it. What? Display marvel. Oh. Okay, so aim for that. I thought the grammar was wrong. So C. So basically heavy. Oh shoot, okay. I see you. So that's an assist. So it's just one button for assist. X or D is swap out. Okay. Hmm. So comboing is definitely not going to be the same in this game as it is in fighters, even though they're the same uh, people who made the game, but you can double jump in the air. So that's something, but let's move on. Nice. If a clash assault hits an opponent in the air, it will not activate the additional attack. Try to use it when the opponent is on the ground, so basically uh, in a hard knockdown. Leg sweep and jump clash attack. If you press the clash button while in a crouching state, you'll perform a leg sweep. If the leg sweep hits, it can knock the opponent down. Also, if you press the clash button while in the air, you will perform a jump clash attack. In Ragnar's case, unlike attack A, or attack B, this will change his jump trajectory and he will rapidly drop to the ground and perform an attack. Now try using leg sweep and jump clash attack. Can we reset position? 
Nice. Okay. So down C. I see you. Okay, I see you. Okay, so there's only two ways you can instant air dash in this game. You can do diagonal back, two motions, or jump, double back, or jump, double forward. Okay, I'm just trying, trying to fill it out. Excellent. Each character's jump clash attack is unique, so try to get a feel for how the other characters work. Okay, guarding. Defense. You can defend against the opponent's attacks by pressing the D-pad in the opposite direction that your character is facing. This action is called a guard. Press back for standing guard. Down. Yeah, that's the basics. Now try guarding. All right, try to hit me, Ragnar. I dare you. Try it. Is there a reflect at all in this game? It says guard. Okay, I was about to say, he's not even swinging at me. So you can guard that. It's like I wonder if there's any defensive option you could take. Like like in uh, fighters, there's there's reflect, but I I doubt there's anything like that in this game. Ah. Chill out, right now the lesson's over. Ah, so you trying to swing at? Okay, guarding. Good. In a real battle, guard is absolutely vital. <laughs> Let's just say it's a. Uh... <sighs> Standing guard cannot defend against attacks aiming for your feet, like leg sweep. You must. This is all basic fighting game stuff. But for anyone who's new to fighting games, I'm no pro. I'm just now getting into them with fighters and then injustice and everything. I used to play that back in the day, but that's not that's not what we're here for. On the other hand, crouching guard cannot defend against clash assault or jump attack. You must switch to standing guard to block these attacks. Now try swapping between standing guard and crouching guard to match your opponent's attacks. All right, let, what are you gonna do, Ragna? Let me actually let me get let me get over you before you do something wild. Hello. I don't think so. Hmm. I don't know how you continue combos like that. Weird. I'm trying to play this as if it's fighters. Guarding. Impressive. Your legs are often targeted while fighting on the ground. So remember to use crouching guard if the opponent is on the ground. Switch to standing guard if they're in the air. Nine times out of ten, you want to crouch block unless you see them going for an air attack. People tend to go for legs a lot in fighting games. Ukemi. If the character you're playing is launched into the air, you can hold either attack B or attack A, attack B, or clash button to perform an aerial ukemi to recover in the air. You can combine an aerial ukemi with the D-pad to choose your direction that you return it. Now try using an aerial ukemi after your opponent's attack. Do an aerial ukemi while down. Oh, okay, what is that, like a tech? I guess. Okay, so it's basically a tech. Let me see what the what B is. Alright, now let me try the clash version. Okay, so it's basically a tech. Hmm, okay. It's, bas it's basically a tech. It's basically how you tech out, like in fighters. Alright, I see you. There are no heavy hits in this game. It's just clash options. So it's basically going to be a bunch of A and B, square and triangle, X and Y. Alright, Ukemi. Nice. If you don't use an aerial Ukemi, you will likely receive follow-up attacks. Try to not make a habit of holding a button when you've been thrown into the air to prevent such additional hits. So what, do you tap it or do you hold it? Ground Ukemi. If the character you're playing is blown back by the opponent's attack, they will automatically perform a gr uh, ground Ukemi the moment they hit the ground. So just like an aerial Ukemi, you can choose a direction. Okay, I wasn't even trying it usually down tech is the best option in fighters so we'll see all right ragna hit me in my legs buddy okay that's a back ukemi I'm so used to the word the term tech oh you can cross them up like that oh shoot that's gonna be nasty oh yeah that's definitely gonna be nasty can you tech up that's the question and eh, it's not really not really much So you didn't even need to press a direction, to be honest. Okay, chill out. Okay, move. let's move on to the next lesson. Great! If you use a backwards ground ukemi around the center of the screen, you can gain distance to compose yourself. Use a forward ground ukemi near the edge of the screen to escape in the center, where you should have plenty of space. Oh, that's nice. That's like a, a simple way to uh, get out of corner pressure. If they trip you, you can just do a uh, forward ukemi or forward tech and then just get out of the corner pressure. That's pretty nice, actually. Duo change, partners. If you press the change button on the ground, you will swap the character you control to your partner in reserve. Partners, character in reserve 
cannot be attacked by the opponent and also recovers their red health gauge over time while in reserve so basically if someone's getting hit you can basically tag them out and you can recover their red health if they have level ones and level threes in this game and it's this made by the same people so technically i'd assume that it would be the same thing level threes hit you or clashes or whatever hit you in this game and you can tag them out to recover blue uh red health i'm just i'm just thinking think about how this game's gonna work it seems promising it's a little different than what i'm used to because it's more uh spritey but we'll see we'll see in this game if one of your characters is defeated the remaining one will have to fight both opponents yeah pay close attention to the situation and duo change when needed so basically instead of a, a z change it's called a duo change in this game now try using duo change and i'm assuming duo change is just three what the heck is p right there so basically just d i'm, I'm gonna call them one two three and four and this is my assist i could keep this the same do these buttons do anything over here oh it's just heavy it's just it's just two so we got a b c what is what is p though Oh, that's a grab. That's a command grab. Good. The character that used duo change will instantly swap out, but there is a slight delay in vulnerability for the character who appears. I'm assuming it's not safe on block, or it's not safe to just randomly tag out if uh if you're getting if your opponent's applying pressure to you. I'd imagine there's like a little window in between where you have to actually let your cut your uh, character that you're duo changing that you're tagging in to recover before you can actually block. So that's that's gonna be interesting how people are gonna integrate that and people who don't know how to play this game, including me never really played a blaze blue game in my life can't be tagging out just randomly you gotta try to strategize your tag outs or else you're gonna get punished for it but be careful when there's a high chance of receiving an attack from the opponent partner skill if you press the partner skill button you will call out your character to perform a partner skill attack gosh i suck at reading Partner skill can be combined with the D-pad to change the uh, action now try using partner skill i'm assuming that's assist in this game so p yep and that's just a regular tag just a regular assist and a forward a forward partner skill he does something completely different and what is back let's see the damage difference we got regular tag or regular assist does about to his g to ragnar's g then we got forward assist about the same amount of damage and then back does way less damage at least with uh with gene that's just one one hit for him yeah it looks like it's about the same doesn't seem like it's uh anything crazy it's just different variations of tagging or uh assisting it's gonna be wild what people are gonna do with that because you have three different <laughs> three different options for freaking tagging or uh assisting it's freaking crazy nice neutral plus partner skill is usually an advancing attack making it easy to use you can use this to create an opening to go on the offense down entrance if your main character is defeated your partner in reserve will automatically swap in when this happens your partner will enter while attack don't let down your guard when you defeated one opponent early or either basically it's not like fighters where you have time in between <laughs> you got something to do in between uh chaos nothing you can do about it all right reversal action oh that's nice we got re is, are these going to be our uh versions of uh uh, reflect or our defensive options to get out of the uh, corner pressure okay it says reversal action reversal action is an attack performed by pressing attack a and change at the same time so basically uh light or one when activated your character will enter an invulnerable state overcoming an opponent in the middle of an of attacking you now try using a reversal action to break your opponent's combo there's breakers in this game oh i love i love i love games with breakers it makes it so much easier so you don't just have to freaking take everything hit me ragna or is it or is it just me also oh, basically what is that um so uh, uh, my question is does it have invisibility frames on startup because it seems like if you're getting pressured i'm assuming that's your one way to break but does it take anything that's the question so it looks like it doesn't take up any meter it, it builds meter more or less and that's one and three or a and d whichever one a is going to be is one for people who aren't familiar with games b is two d is three four is c and then the, this button is something completely different but anyway so let's move on it doesn't look like it takes any meter to do that so that could be interesting people are probably just going to spam that i hope that it's like not going to be something that you can do while someone's comboing you because then people are just going to spam it and you're never going to get any combos off i'm hoping you have to have a gap in between corner uh you know like a uh, block string you know type of pressure stuff like that but anyway reversal action impressive this skill is extremely useful for starting a counter attack but the opening after the skill is very long be mindful that if it's guarded you can easily receive
receive a painful counterattack yourself. Okay, so basically that yeah, that's good. That's good. So it's it's it sounds like if you do use this uh you know reversal to try to get out of a combo, there's gonna be a, a massive amount of negative frames in between, and I'm assuming it's not gonna be safe on block if someone manages to block it. So you're probably gonna get punished if you just throw this out randomly. That's good. I'm a lot more into this than I thought. I'm really I'm really getting into these fighting games. This stuff is fun as heck. Skills and extra skills. Concerning skills. Skills are powerful attacks that can be used by combining specific D-pad and uh, buttons presses. Such inputs are called commands. Ragna's skill dead spike can be activated by inputting basically quarter forward command then pressing one or two. Now try using dead spike. The trick is the dead spike command in tracing from down to right. Yo, I know how to do quarters. I, I do know how to, I know how to do quarter uh, quarter circles. I play fighters. What's the damage on that? Not bad. Can you combo out of that though? Hold on. Okay, hold on. So you have to press. Yeah, you have to press four in the air, or else you're not gonna get that combo. Can you? The, my question is, can you do? Can you combo off of this? It's not looking like it. Hold on. Yeah, you can't do anything after that. So I'm assuming. Hmm. Hmm. So it looks like you can only combo a certain way in the air, which is weird. It's great. Some skills also have additional attacks. In Ragnar's case, this would include Hell's Fang. Hell's Fang is activated by first inputting quarterback, then pressing one or light, whichever. I don't freaking know. I'm gonna call it freaking one to make it easier. A. Hey, I don't want to think of too many terms. If Hell's Fang hits, you can press one or two or three to blow the opponent away in an uh, additional attack or a b or freaking c now try connecting the hell's fang to its additional attack okay so i'm assuming let's see the damage on that so that barely goes past his g so they all the same yeah i guess they're all the same that's a decent combo it does a decent amount of damage i wonder if you can you can you do that in the air Oh, okay. Impressive. In Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, all characters can use skills by combining these two types of commands. So basically, it's just quarter forward, quarter back, just like fighters. If you master these two commands, you'll be able to unleash skills as, as any character. You can view the command list of skills for each character from the pause menu. You can check whether they have additional attacks as well as their name. An extra skill is a powerful skill and is used by inputting a command plus the, the clash button. To activate an extra skill, you require one bar of the skill gauge at the bottom of the screen. So which one is the skill gauge? Gauge, though for example ragnar's extra skill dead spike is activated by first inputting quarter forward command then pressing four or clash whatever the freak if the action is successful your character will glow blue then unleash a gigantic dead spike it also adds an additional attack to deal major damage now try using the dead spike extra skill all right so uh quarter forward four oops messed that up did i do it so that hold on wait 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 Okay, so it takes the bar at the bottom left, not the blue bar. Does that change the damage when you input a different version of it? Basically, it's all the same. It just mad does doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter which one you press. It's all the same. You can you can mix it up, but there's really no point to. You can just press four, and then you can just hit one after. I want. Can you can you uh, delay the inputs though? Hold on. Yeah, you can. Okay, nice, nice, nice. That'll be uh, crazy for uh, mixing up opponents out here like I'm a pro. I'm really not. I'm just really into this right now. Great. The properties of extra skills vary by character. You should test out a wide variety of them. So basically, it seems like Ragna is the Super Saiyan Goku of this game. He's the startup character that you use in the training mode or in the tutorials. And basically, this is the same thing. Ragna is going to be that starter character that everybody uses, but I kind of don't want to use him. He seems clean, but I've seen some way nicer looking characters from a uh, band stream Wace, Noel, Lene. Oh yo, hold on a second, I'm liking this music. <laughs> Drum and bass, nice. Distortion skill. A distortion skill is a super powerful attack used by inputting a command plus pushing attack B and clash buttons at the same time. To activate a distortion skill, you require two bars of the skill gauge at the bottom of the screen. Ragnar's distortion skill, Carnage Scissors, is activated by first inputting a quarter forward command, then pressing attack B and clash at the same time. Freaking taking me forever to read this. Now try using the Carnage Scissors distortion skill. 
So was so was what was that? B and C at the same time. So uh, two and four, quarter four, two four. Oh, that's looking like a that's looking like a level two. Does does it work with quarterback? Oh dang, he did quarterback, and that's also uh, two bars. Command grab. I wonder if every character has a command grab. What's his version of that? Hold on a sec. Arctic dagger. That was whack. Do I have to keep pressing it? Nope. It's just one, <laughs> just one slice. Wait, that. Whoa, that was like 16 hits. Hold on. Yeah, these buttons are kind of weird. A lot of cross-ups. Yeah, that's weird. All right, I think that's the last lesson. Let's see. Good. Not only do distortion skills deal great damage, but they also start with invulnerability and other high specs. Proactively use your distortion skill when the skill gauge is available. So basically, this is like a level three in terms of invincibility frames nope. whenever you start it up, or just in general, or when you start it up. Distortion skill duo is a super powerful coordinated attack where both the main and partner characters use a distortion skill. DSD is used by pressing the partner skill button during a distortion skill. During a DS. However, activating the DSD requires another two bars of the skill gauge at the bottom of the screen. Now try using Ragna and Jean's distortion. DSD, freak. Gotta get used to saying that. Now how do I do that? Hit with DSD after Ragna's distortion skill. What was his distortion skill? This? There we go, I got it. So it's basically uh, a Z. Yep, it's basically uh, an ultimate Z. What the freak do they call him? In fighters, I forget. Whatever the freak is, a Z change whenever you swap out after a super. Let's see his. Okay, not bad, not bad. Interesting how the buttons work in this. Some distortion skills cannot activate DSD or can only activate it during the latter part of the action. In Ragnar's case, DSD can only be activated during Devoured by Darkness after he blows away the opponent he grabbed. Pause. <laughs> you should check specific timings beforehand. And it looks like that's it. It looks looking like it's it. Why do I have stars on everything except for this one? Oh, shoot. There's way more stuff. I've already been recording for like 45 minutes. Way longer than I expected. But anyways, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to jump into uh into the movement guide really quick. I want to try some stuff. Okay, so his, you have to do multiple attacks before you can go into the air combo. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, but anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know. This is just a little, uh, little tiny video. Well, it's probably going to be really long, longer than probably like 20 minutes or so. Just going through and trying out this little beta, seeing what, you know, what you can do. I just wanted to do this because it seemed like it would be interesting. You know, the game's beta version, the game hasn't came out yet. So basically, I was just, you know, coming in here, trying the tutorials out just to see how the game plays, how it feels. I probably cop the full game when it comes out, depending. I'll uh, do some more you know, playing about the game and then see how I feel. Usually Usually, I probably end up getting it anyways. It's another fighting game. If you guys want to see more uh, videos on this, let me know down in the comments. Comments are always appreciated. Let's try to get 10 likes on the video. And also, check out my last video, Shadow of the Beast, Episode 2. Pretty fire game so far. Very underrated. Pretty good, uh, pretty well-made game. More videos will come on this beta before it's over. It ends on the 14th. It's currently the 12th right now. 2.30 in the morning. We can do some more practicing, and uh, that's pretty much it. It's been Tavis. Remember to always point have a great day. Love you guys, and uh, you guys. Peace. Pretty interesting game. We'll see how it goes. A lot of adjusting to do.